Okay, so here we have a bunch of different uh, algebraic functions. And in algebra and more uh, advanced mathematics, you're going to be required to uh, graph a lot of different things. And, uh, you know, like this particular thing right here, x squared plus y squared equals 4. There's a specific uh, thing that we need to do uh, in order to graph this. Now, uh, you first of all, you obviously got to recognize what this is, like what shape this is, and then go ahead and actually graph this. And this is actually a pretty easy example of a particular shape. I'm going to actually use this as an example uh, for this excellent graphing hack. And it's not really a hack. It's something that you always need to keep in mind. But a lot of students will forget. They'll come across like something like this, this. It doesn't make a difference. A lot of these different functions, and they'll be like, uh, you know, the question or on a test or quiz will be like, graph, uh, graph this thing. And then a lot of students will be like, hmm, I forget how to graph this. Uh, I don't remember the procedure. But if you remember this little video that I'm going to uh, obviously uh, walk you through, uh, you'll always be able to handle any kind of situation as a plan B. Okay, your plan A needs to be uh, you know, recognizing what type of uh, function this uh, these are. Okay, now these are just uh, examples, but any uh, function that you're going to study, you need to be able to recognize it and then know how to graph that. And there's a lot of, that goes into functions. You know, it could be symmetry, odd and even functions, uh, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So again, uh, this is by no means a way to escape all that. But in a jam, okay, if you're like stuck and you're like, oh. I just don't remember this. I don't know how to do this. Well, if you remember this little thing that I'm going to show you here, at least you can get some sort of basic graph down. Okay. So, you, uh, and by the way, this what I'm going to show you is um, kind of a primary method as well uh, to graphing even more sophisticated functions. Uh, some of the stuff that I'm teaching in my pre-calculus course that I've already taught, like polar equations and all kinds of good stuff like that. Uh, you know, we're kind of really going to depend upon what I'm going to be talking about here. And this will look familiar to you, okay? Um, however, a lot of uh, things that we learn, we forget. And uh, you got to remember this uh, thing that I'm going to be talking about anytime you're, you're thinking about graphing anything, okay? So we're going to get to this in a second. As a matter of fact, we're going to do this uh, function. We're going to graph this using this technique. Now, if you think you know what this is and, and you think you can graph this, okay, without an aid of a graphing calculator, go ahead and pause the video and see what you can come up with. We're actually, again, going to do this using this little uh, hack. And we'll get to this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, if you're interested, you can check out my Math Help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different uh, math courses ranging from uh, pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, very shortly, but I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACUPLACER, ALEX, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, all those exams and many others, I can help you out uh, to uh, successfully get through the math sections. Because if you don't get through the math sections on these exams, exams, you don't do well on the exams, which of course will have negative consequences towards your goals. Now, um, I also do a lot of work with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously I help those of you that are just having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you truly are serious about improving in math and wanting to really, you know, do better in math, then you got to be serious about this. And that is notes. You got to take great math notes. This is uh, work. You know, uh, there's no way <laughs> uh, other than to describe it as, hey, you got to work every day when you're in class to take great math notes. This means that you have to be focused. You got to be paying attention. OK, now over decades of teaching math, those students who I've seen take great math notes almost always end up with fantastic grades like A pluses. And then the reverse is true. Uh, those students who just like, yeah, I don't need to take notes. Uh, my best friend takes my notes for me because um, I got more important things to do. I got to check in on my social media. Uh, you know, I got to do my homework for my other class. Listen, I get it. I was a student once way back in the good old days. And uh, I used to do all those same things as well. Uh, and I would get grades like this. 
So if you're getting grades like this, okay, and you're, you're like, hey, how come I can't get a grade like that? You got to do the work, okay? I'm sorry to say there's no shortcuts. There's no hacks uh, in terms of, uh, you know, doing the work and effort to learn. It's all about focus. Anyways, enough about note-taking. If you start improving your notes, everything will get better for you. That I promise. Now, in the meantime, you still need something to study from, so I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into this uh, graphing hack. Now, um, again, uh, if you're taking algebra or beyond, okay, you're going to have to do a lot of graphing. Graphing graphs of functions are tremendously uh, valuable, right? So you're going to have to learn how to graph, uh, and also too, you're, you're probably going to have to learn how to deal, learn a um, how to use a graphing calculator as well. But that's by no means uh, like, oh yeah, I'll just use my uh, calculator. No, no, no. More often than not, you're not going to be able to use your calculator on many exams and quizzes. So let's get into this guy right here and talk about this little uh, hack, okay? Hey, everyone likes this word, you know, because it kind of implies a shortcut or a little secret technique. But, um, you know, really this is just common sense. Now, what am I talking about? Well, let's, uh, let's remember this game right here, okay? All right, and let's see here. You're like, what am I doing, all right? Well... You'll see here in a second. Okay, so I just plotted a bunch of points here. And uh, what what do you think is the shape of this? Okay, these are some points. And you're like, hmm, well, I don't know. It looks like a rectangle, right? Do you remember that game, Connect the Dots? And you would just like go through like this. And you were like, oh, okay. Uh, that is the shape. It's a rectangle. Well, that's effectively what uh, we're going to be doing in this little hack. Okay, we're going to be playing connect the dots. That's it. Okay, well, all right, that's all I need to know. Well, not exactly. We need to know how to get the dots. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about is how can you get the dots for any function, right? Well, the way to do that is a good old fashioned uh, table of values, right? Here is a table. And uh, uh, this is something that you probably first learn when you're learning how to graph lines in algebra. And, um, you know, oftentimes we'll go back and be like, oh, yeah, I learned this little thing when I was learning uh, how to graph lines like y equals 2x plus 1. And then my teacher taught me this y equals mx plus b business. And it was so much easier uh, because it's a, you know, a hassle to uh, create these tables. Well, it might be a little bit of a hassle, but let me tell you something. You can graph anything with a table of values. I mean uh, anything. And it's actually a primary way of graphing, um, well, not a table like this, a little bit more sophisticated table, but the uh, concepts are still the same when we're talking about very elaborate graphs like in polar uh, functions, which kind of like look like uh, some functions. They look like clovers or like leaves like this crazy looking graphs are like, wow, how do we even do that? Well, uh, you got to use a, a table of values that are a little bit more involved, but basically the mechanics are the same. So here we go. This is the function that I said that we were going to use as an example. So what is it? Okay. Uh, any idea what shape this is going to be? How can we can get a graph of this? So uh, if you said uh, a circle, is this a circle? If you said that, Okay, just for the you know the fact that you even said this is a circle, well then I am going to give you a little happy face and a check mark. Okay, so that's pretty good. That is a this is in fact a circle. All right, so that's you know first things first. So if you recognize this as a circle, that's excellent. Now you may not have studied conic sections yet. Okay, now conic sections, uh, the word conic. Let me just erase our little happy face here. Here's a cone. All right, like an ice cream cone. And then the way we can slice this ice cream cone into different shapes that we uh, that yield from us slicing slicing this cone are called conic sections. Okay, then this would include uh, shapes like circles, ellipses, parabolas, hyperbolas, all this kind of stuff. But these aren't the only type of things that um, you're going to be required to uh, graph in mathematics. Okay, there's things like rational functions. Uh, 
Uh, there's all exponential functions, radical functions, etc. I can go on and on and on, polar functions. But, um, but this is, a, in fact, a conic section. But let's say you're like, well, I didn't study this yet. Okay, I, I don't know this because, you know, my teacher hasn't taught me this yet. Well, again, uh, if you know this little connect the dot kind of uh, concept, uh, we can always plot anything, okay, right now. Okay, I want to teach you. Uh, enough where you can just take on any function. Now, it's it, this is a little bit of a work harder, not smarter type of situation because we really want to use the most direct techniques to graph these things. That is uh, plan A. So when you do, in fact, study conic sections, let's say, for example, circles, this thing is super easy to graph. However, okay, if you forget or if you haven't learned how to graph something, then we got to use our little hack. All right, so um, hopefully I made my point here. Now let's go ahead and actually figure this out. So how to use a table of values? Well, you you want to. We're dealing with x and y here, so make a little x y table, and uh, you want to just use some random points. All right, so I'm going to select some nice easy points for x. You always start with your x uh, values. Your x values are going to uh, be the input to get your y values. So let's use negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And um, let's see what happens. Okay, so when x is negative 2, y is 0. But let's just do that math real quick. Uh, let's do it right here. So negative 2 squared plus y squared is equal to 4. So negative 2 squared is going to be 4. 4 plus y squared is equal to 4. And now I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. I get y squared is equal to 0. Okay, so obviously y is equal to zero. So when x was negative two, y is zero. That means the coordinate, this coordinate, negative two, zero, is on this function's graph. Okay, so this is how we do this. So let's go ahead and work another one real quick. And let's do um, this one here for negative one. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do all of these here because uh, I don't want this video to be any longer than it needs to be. So I'm gonna plug in negative one squared plus y squared is equal to 4. Now, of course, you need to know some basic algebra here. So let's do the rest over here. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 plus y squared is 4. So we get y squared is equal to 3. Now, when I take the square root of both sides to get what y is equal to, y is going to be equal to both positive and negative square root of 3. So the square root of 3 is about 1.73. Okay, so when x was negative 1, y is both a positive and negative square root of 3. So the coordinates negative 1, positive square root of 3, when that's about 1.73, is on that graph. And negative 1, um, oh, we're going to need a negative 1 right here. Negative uh, 1.73 uh, is on that graph. So these two coordinates here are on that graph. Okay, so the same thing is going to work out over here. I need to put a little negative. So here is our table. Okay, so we'll walk through. You can kind of see the rest of this stuff. When I plug in zero, you'll get uh, zero two and zero negative two uh, just by just doing this little stuff. Now, this is work. Okay, I'm not saying that uh, what I'm showing you here is like, you know, doesn't require some work and effort, but it's it's a way to absolutely get some dots that are on this graph. Okay, we want to play the game connect the dots. Well, how do we get our dots? Well, we get our dots by getting some x values into a table. And sometimes you have to kind of play around with certain x values, but use easy numbers first. Just start, and then you can add in some more um, values to uh, get a more precise graph. Uh, but get at least a good, you know, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight values, uh, and then just start seeing where this thing takes you. Okay, so here is our dots, if you will, points that are on this function. Now let's go ahead and actually uh, apply this to get a graph. All right, so here, x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. Okay, so this was the problem, right? Well, in fact, when you know how to graph a circle, this is x squared plus y squared is equal to 2 squared. This is a graph of a circle, okay, uh, with radius 2, and it's the center at the origin. So if you knew this, you'd be like, oh yeah, this thing is centered at zero, zero, okay, like right there, and it has a radius of two, so this is one, that is two, and you can see this thing is going around, and here's our lovely circle. It would take you all of about 37 seconds 
to graph. Of course, if you knew about conic sections, you're like, okay, this is what this is, blah, 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 blah. And of course, this is the way to go. Now, to uh, produce all these dots, you know, all these table of values, that's going to take us some work. That might take you a couple minutes. But anyways, again, uh, the point here is you can graph anything. Or right? if you forget how to graph it or if you were never, um, you know, taught how to graph a particular function, well, do what we just did here. All right. So here is our um, points. So let's take a look at that first one. Negative 2, 0. Where is that at? Well, uh, negative 2 on x, y, 0, that would be right there. Okay. How about negative 1? positive uh, square root of 3, okay, which is 1.73. So that would be, here is negative 1. And this is a little bit less than 2, so that would be that point. But we also have a negative 1, negative uh, 1.73, which is that negative square root of 3. So that would be like right there. Well, okay, we'll just keep going to 0, 2. Well, x is 0, y is 2 is right there. x is 0, but y is also negative 2. That's that point. So you can kind of see what's going on here. When x is 1, we got a um, positive 1.73, so that's there. And then when x is 1, we also have that negative 1.73. Remember, this is when we took the positive negative of square root of 3. And then we have uh, 2, 0, that's right there. And uh, hopefully, you know, we're like, hmm, I think this is a circle. And then, you know, you would go ahead and plot a circle. Now, if you wanted to be extra sure, you can get more points right in here. You could be like, you know what? I suspect this is a circle, so you could get more points in here. So let's say uh, you want to get, just to verify this, you would have to let your x value be what? Well, somewhere between 1 and 2. So on our x, y chart, we would want to plug in like x is 1.5. Uh, maybe right here, we can also do 1 half. Now, it's work. I'm not saying it's not work, okay? Uh, but it is a guaranteed way for you to get a uh, decent graph of a function, okay? And a matter of fact, uh, when you study things like, again, like uh, polar equations and, and uh, stuff like that, and a little more advanced mathematics, like what I'm gonna be teaching, or what I've already taught, actually, in my pre-calculus course, um, I'm just doing the last little uh, fine-tuning before I launch it, but all my videos and all that stuff is all ready to go, so I'm really excited to have people learn that good old, uh, you know, advanced mathematics. So if you're interested in that stuff, just in a couple weeks, so you can check out my course. But, um, you know, using tables of values, is not like a, a thing that you just like, yeah, well, yeah, I'll just remember how to graph these things. No, you know, you won't. <laughs> Believe me when I tell you, you'll come across various functions. Uh, and we need to use tables anyways, because uh, if we're we need a, like to make our graphs more precise with various functions. Maybe it's exponential function and stuff like that. We need to use tables. So keep those in mind. And again, you know, whether you like this word hack, tip, trick, whatever the case is, if you remember this, you're going to be able to handle any kind of problem. Okay. You just won't be like, oh, I don't know how to do it. Well, no, just start making a, a table of value with the time allotted and, and try to get something down. Okay. All right. So if you thought this video was helpful in some way, if, uh, if you even liked it, okay, well, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And uh, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've uh, been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand videos, uh, basic to advanced math, all there for you. My goal, my mission is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Uh, nobody should be failing math, okay? If you are struggling, you know, start with, uh, you know, uh, the right habits. The right habits is pay attention every day, take great notes, talk to your math teacher. But beyond that, there's so many great resources out there. So if you like my teaching style, you know, uh, please take advantage of the videos that I'm doing now and I will be doing in the future. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.